What are read models? It's a data model specialized for reading, as the name suggests, and in this video I'm going to show you how to implement read models. In CQRS, which stands for Command Query Responsibility Segregation, it's common to have two types of data models. You have the write model and the read model. Write models are optimized for writing to the database, and read models are optimized for querying. Here you can see the order write model, but what would a read model look like and where would it live? One solution can be to define your read models in the domain. So let's go ahead and create a read model for our order. I'm going to call it order summary. For the read models, you want to make them as simple as possible. So I'm actually going to use a record and we're not going to have any behavior on our class. We're just going to have data. So let's say for the order summary, we want to expose the order ID, the customer ID, and the total price of the order as a decimal. So I'm going to create a total price field. So this would be the read model for our order. Imagine how you would query this data. You would need at least to get the orders and then join on the line items to calculate the total price. The read model prepares this data ahead of time and all you have to do is just query by the order ID. We can even simplify this further and name it ID instead of order ID because it's obvious that this points to an order. So the next step would be how do we expose the order summary in our data model? You can add it to our database context. Let's say under the orders DB set, we can also expose the order summary DB set and let's call it order summaries. In the implementation of this interface, which is our DB context, we need to add the missing member, which is the order summaries DB set. And then we need to add a new migration to create this table in the database. I'm going to omit this step because I'm sure you know how to create a database migration. The next problem to solve would be when do we actually create our read model? So let's go to the create order command handler and let's take a look at the handle method. One solution would be to create the read model as soon as we apply some change to the order. For example, we can create the read model here right after we add our order and we can do something like this. We can say order summaries and we can add a new entity which is going to be an order summary and we can specify the order ID value, the customer ID value and then the total price is going to be zero because this is a new order without any line items. So right as we create our order, we also add our order summary read model. So this is immediately consistent. And as soon as we call the save changes, our read model is going to be persisted in the database. An alternative solution would be to subscribe to the order created event. And then when we handle the event, we can either query the latest state of the order and create the respective order summary model, or we can create specific events that contain enough information to calculate the new state of the read model. So how would you use the read model? Let's add a new feature to get the order summary. So I'm going to define a new query inside, which is going to be the get order summary query. I'm going to make it a record and it's only going to have the order ID as the argument. And it's going to be an I request coming from mediator returning an order summary instance. Because this is a read model, it's optimized for exposing it through our API and we don't necessarily need to create a response object. So let's also add the handler for this query. So this is going to be get order summary query handler and let's implement this class. So this is going to be internal sealed. It's going to implement the I request handler interface for the get order summary query and it's going to return an order summary instance. So let's implement the handle method and I'm going to inject the DB context or rather the I application DB context interface from our constructor. And then how we use it inside of the handle method is by directly returning the order summary from the database. So you can say await context order summaries we can either call first or default or single or default here. First or default is going to be a little bit more performant and we're going to use first or default async. And the query is going to be to fetch the order summary with the ID matching the one specified in the query. So we have to update the query to make the result nullable because I'm using first or default. 
So I'm just going to apply the nullable reference type here. So this is all we need to implement the get order summary query handler. I'm going to expose an endpoint to fetch the order summary. So let's go ahead and define it in our web API project. So I'm going to say map get orders and we're going to specify the order ID in the route and then we're going to say summary. We're going to define an asynchronous delegate to handle our endpoint. So we're going to need a GUID for the order ID and we're going to need the iSender from mediator to send our query. So we're going to create a new query which is going to be a get order summary query with the given order ID. And then we can just return, let's say results, okay, and we can directly await send or send and we send the get order summary query. So we are directly returning the order summary from the database if it exists or if it doesn't, we're going to return null. So let's see how this flow looks like in practice. So let's send a request from Postman to create a new order and also create a new instance of our read model. So let's get to the step where we create a new order summary. So we created our order and now we want to define an order summary and immediately persist it in the database. It's important that we are using the same ID as we are for the order and we can because we are using GUIDs and then we persist both our order and the order summary in the same database request. You can see the insert statements here to insert the order and the order summary and now we publish a message to the bus but this doesn't concern us for our read model. So let's now try to query our read model. I'm going to send a GET request to our API and we're going to specify the ID of the order that I just created and we want to query the order summary. So if I send this request, we hit the breakpoint inside of the GET ORDER SUMMARY QUERY HANDLER. So this is going to query the order summary table by the primary key which is very fast with a relational database because we are using an index seek operation which immediately retrieves the row that we want to read. So if I press continue, we're going to see the response back from our API. One thing that you can do and that I forgot earlier was to use a no tracking query that's very important for read-only queries like this one because you don't want to be losing performance to change tracking if you're not going to use it. A few more optimizations that you can do is to create a separate database context that is going to contain your read models and then you can configure all of the queries on that database context to be no tracking queries. In a future video, I'm going to show you how to leverage events and eventual consistency to create your read models in the background. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to smash that like button Subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss the future video about read models and until next time, stay awesome.